parts. So part we did together and part we did right before the finals and not many of you attended, okay? So let's do the part we did together first. So this is what I call part one. And I have this, um, this sheet that I filled in the lecture, okay? So this is explaining some of the stuff in the, um, or this is like summarizing some of the stuff we're, 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 we'll consider, the, the very important pieces, okay? Um, I can I can put the exact one on e-learning, inshallah. Uh, I will put this one on e-learning. Okay. So we have uh, pro drugs are the compounds. Of course, you know what pro drugs are. They are compounds. They are not biologically. Uh, they are not active. But when they go inside the body, they undergo some metabolism and they they become biologically active. Okay. Okay. So we have we have two uh, we have two types of pro drugs. Okay. We uh, or two objectives of pro drug usage. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, I'm not focused. Um. So we have we have two types of pro drugs. We have the carrier linked pro drugs, and the bi precursor pro drugs. What is the difference? The carrier linked pro drugs is is simply you have. Um, can we draw here? So we have. So we have uh, we have our drug, and and we have a certain uh, linkage, link, and we have a certain group. Okay, so we have we have two things. We have the drug, and we have a certain link. So this is the drug. This is the link. This is another group. So it's a carrier linked pro drug. Okay, it carries some other group. So when it goes inside the body, what happens? It just is just it just breaks, and this this part here is the active part. You see the idea? Yeah. Okay. So this is what they call the ca the carrier link pro drugs. They have temporary linkage between the uh, active substance and the carrier group. So this is the active substance. This is a carrier group, and this is a temporary linkage. When it goes inside the body, it breaks. All right. The bi precursors are different. The bi precursors. Uh, the idea is that we have the drug, and this drug is um, is is inactive. But when it undergoes metabolism, some Part of it changes. This part, for example, changes, and it becomes active. Okay, so so the the drug itself changes. You see the idea? Okay. So this is the second part of the lectures. Here, this is the second part of the lecture of lecture nine, and this is the first part of lecture nine. Okay, we're we're, we're doing this now. So why do we want to make pro drugs? The um, the reason uh, behind the or the objectives of of using these strategies. We have seven things we have to memorize. Okay, we need we need to enhance membrane permeability, or we need to prolong the duration of action, enhance enhance patient acceptability, enhance drug solubility, stability, uh, decrease side effects, or target certain sites inside the body. Okay, so these these are the ones we have here. So we have permeability, we have duration of action, we have patient acceptability, we have drug solubility, stability, side effects, and so on. Okay, so under each one of these, we'll, we'll study some strategies. You have to understand these because you'll be able to apply them in the exam. Okay, you should be able to apply them in the exam. All right, so um, let's let's start. Forget about this. So enhancing membrane permeability. So how do we enhance membrane permeability? There are two two general strategies. Either I increase the lipophilicity. Or, what is the other strategy? I will use a transport system inside the GIT, and this transport system can um, absorb my drug. You see the idea? So the drug gets from inside the mouth, and it goes into the GIT. I want it to get absorbed inside the body. So either I increase its lipophilicity, so it, it passes through the membrane, or I use some transporters inside the GIT system, and these transporters can help take my drug and get it inside the system. Okay, so two general strategies. So how do I increase the lipophilicity? I will always, always, always attach my drug using an ester to something that is lipophilic. Okay, so this is the, the, the first thing. And how, do I, uh, and how do I utilize a certain transporter system? The transporter systems, these, these transporters, they can recognize amino acids. So I can attach my drug or make part of my drug like an amino acid, attach it to an amino acid, so the transporter system would see this amino acid, recognize it, and then take it inside, okay, absorb it. So it will absorb it with the attached drug, okay? So this is, uh, this is the first part, how to increase membrane permeability, 
okay how to increase absorption so let's let's look at the um, at the um, examples I want you to read this stuff of course so for example here we have epinephrine it is very hydrophilic I want to increase membrane permeability what do I do I will attach I will attach esters here that would mask those hydrophilic groups and those are the piv uh, uh, pivalic acid esters okay the pivalic acid it looks sorry they are very lipophilic because they have a carbon and each carbon is attached to three methyl groups okay so when it when it when it passes the membrane it then it will then break from here and then the epinephrine will be released you see the idea so I, uh, the esterase enzymes would come here and will break those parts oh, yeah. it will break it, it, yeah it will go here and it will break this and this and then the the same drug will be released the bioactive uh, drug will be released okay so uh, this is a similar idea so what uh, so what do we see in the exam so in the exam for example I can get you this drug and that drug and I ask you to comment what what did we do so you will see for example that there is an ester here and you will see that this ester is lipophilic so you see you will say something like uh, we were we we're trying to increase to enhance membrane permeability. So what did we do? We attached a lipophilic ester. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Or the other way around, I'll get you this drug and I and I tell you, please make it uh, more membrane permeable. So what would you do? You'll just attach an ester. It doesn't have to be the same ester, but any lipophilic ester. Do we have examples of lipophilic esters? Yes, we have lots of these in the in the lecture. Don't worry. So here, here we have ampicillin. It's 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 taken orally, but it has a little bit poor uh, absorption. So how how do we improve its absorption? We can we can attach an ester to it. Again, it's a lipophilic ester. Okay, but but the problem is why do we have this very big ester? Like you see here, we have an ester. This is an ester linkage, and then another ester linkage. Right, this is the, this this one we called that we call an extended ester. So why do we have an extended ester? Because we want we want the esterase enzyme. So when when ampicillin is absorbed, we want the esterase enzyme to go there and to break here so that we can get our ampicillin back. Right. So this is the active one. You see the idea? So how can we have this? This here we have. Uh, if we put an ester here, and actually there is lots of steric hindrance. The esterase enzyme will not will not even will not be able to go and break this. You see the point? So you will make a pro drug, but it will not be able to be, uh, it will not be activated inside the body. All right. So we have we have a certain drug, the ampicillin, and we need to have COOH in ampicillin to be active. Okay. Yes. So we are masking this so that we just get it inside the body. Okay. To be able to be absorbed, so we uh, so, so that it will be absorbed, we, we put a, a hydrophobic uh, chain here. Ah, so that's ampicillin. We didn't take the ampicillin. We just took the, the active side and make it to the drug. And, and no, no, we're, we're just trying to make it more lipophilic. That's what we're trying to do. I don't we want to make the ampicillin more lipophilic so that it gets absorbed. Yes. Okay, but the idea is that I want it when it once it's absorbed, I want it to break, because yes. I want to retrieve my ampicillin. This is the active part. But the problem is that we have lots of steric hindrance here in ampicillin, lots of rings and stuff like this. So how do we break this ester? The esterase enzyme will not be able to break it. So yes, it, it got absorbed, but it will not break and it will not be active. So the trick here is to do an extended ester. So the extended ester works this way. This is what's included here. The extended ester works this way. If we have a certain steric clash here, for example, we have something that looks like this. this so the drug has some steric clash here so the esterase enzyme will not be even able to go and break the ester linkage so we make an extended ester we call it an acyl oxy alkyl ester this is an extended ester you have to know this acyl oxy alkyl ester so we use this extended ester why because the esterase enzyme will be able to attack here away from the drug and then it will nature it will just break spontaneously and release my drug no okay so we have it's for anything that has so we have a certain drug we have a certain drug and the drug has a COOH okay any drug that has a COOH 
any drug that has COH and, and it needs, we need this for the activity. Okay. So we, we create a prodrug, so we make a prodrug, and the prodrug would look something like this. Yes. COO and then a lipophilic ester. Okay. Okay. So we want this drug to pass the, uh, uh, the gut, the GIT, yes. and get absorbed. Yes. And we want it, once it's absorbed, we want it to, to, to go back to its active form. Yes. By the esterase enzyme. Yes. Okay. But the problem is, because of the steric hindrance we're having, the esterase enzyme will not be able to go and break it. Yeah, so this is the problem. How we can deal with this? Exactly. So how can we deal with this? We make an extended ester. So instead of having this ester, we create something called extended ester. So we, there is a mis methyl group here or any alkyl group. And then we have um, uh, an, an oxygen and then we have another ester here. So the esterase enzyme, instead of attacking at this point, it attacks here. Yeah, yeah. You get the idea? Mm. Instead of attacking here, it attacks here. All right. So that's the idea, that's the trick we played with ampicillin. Uh, enhancing membrane, membrane permeability, this is another trick. So we instead of, so, so here we have a phosphate and the phosphate is very, very polar. Okay. So we want to attach, we want to attach esters here as well. But in case of phosphate, you cannot attach the ester directly. Otherwise it will break just in water. We don't want this. So we will, we will make this spacer, this spacer. Okay. So we put an ester that is lipophilic, like this trimethyl ester. Okay. This is another pyvalic ester, actually. And then we, we put a spacer before the phosphate. Let's summarize what we said. So we have the... Um, to increase the permeability, we want to increase the lipophilicity. We can add the dipyval oil ester, like we did in, uh, with epinephrine. And we can add it with a certain spacer. We have the phosphate, and we make a certain spacer, and then we complete with the ester. Okay. Or sometimes we need the extended ester, which is the acyl oxyalkyl ester. And you have to know or have to recognize wh wh when do we need this. Let's, let's see here, for example. If I want to overcome the steric hindrance of a certain ester, I will use the extended ester. And if I want to decrease the rate of ester hydrolysis, for example, it, the ester is very labile, it breaks right away. I don't want this to happen. I want it to get absorbed first and then breaks. Okay, so I'm trying to manage. So if I want to decrease the rate of ester hydrolysis, I put, I add some steric hindrance or I change it into an amide, for example. Okay? But if I want it to, to break more, then I will make this acyl oxalpine. You see the idea? Okay, so this is one way of enhancing membrane permeability to increase the lipophilicity. What else can we do? We want to hijack the transporter system. Okay, so there is a transporter system that transports the amino acids. We want to utilize this amino acid transporter and hijack it. Okay, so how do we do this? We have a drug here, for example. Here, we have this midurine, and then uh, uh, this, is, this is the active part. This one is the active part, okay? So, uh, but this is, this is not absorbed because of its hydrophilicity. So what do we do? We attach to it this part. If you can, if you're good, you would recognize that this part is called, this is glycine. It's an amino acid. There is a carbon here, and it has two hydrogens, and then amino, and then carboxylic group. And it makes an amide linkage with this, a peptide linkage, actually. You see the idea? All right. So what's, what's the, uh, sorry? I don't understand this. What, what, which part? This is just a glycine, an amino acid. Yes. OK? So we attached it because the whole idea is that we're attaching this because we want we want the receptor or the transporter to recognize this amino acid yes. so it will transport the whole molecule inside the body and then any peptidase inside the body would break it and would release the active molecule okay so the trick is to connect my molecule to one of the small amino acids like here for example glycine and here for example we add valine okay it's just an it's just an amino acid okay Okay, so this is, this is, these are these two parts here. To hijack the transporter system, I can attach a glycine, so this is my drug, and then I attach to it a glycine, or I attach to it a valine. Okay, so what else can I do? I, I want to increase the duration of action. So I, increase, I can increase lipophilicity. How do I increase lipophilicity? 
it's the same ideas. I will just attach an ester. Okay. So the idea now is why if I increase the lipophilicity, why does this increase the duration of action of a certain drug? Because when, when a drug is very lipophilic, when a drug is very lipophilic, it goes to the body in, in the muscle, for example, and it makes a depot, an oily depot. It's like a piece of oil there. Okay? So it will not it will not escape easily to the system, to the uh, blood. Okay? So it will take time to escape to the blood. And then piece by piece will escape to the blood and then it will be activated. Okay? So the idea here is very easy. To prolong the duration of action, we can increase lipophilicity. So we, uh, we use highly lipophilic esters, and this is important. For example, haloperidol. We, we, it, it's, already, it's, already, uh, it's already good and lipophilic, but we want to make it extremely lipophilic. So it, for, with this OH, we'll attach a very long lipophilic chain, like this one, for example, a decano-8 ester, 10 carbons. You see the idea? Okay. So this would make it go into the muscle, for example, and it will remain there as an oily, an oily center. And then it would dissipate the haloperidol bit by bit. And once it enters the circulation, it gets broken by the esterase enzyme. You see the idea? Hmm? What's the problem? Hmm? It's the same, same trick. I'm trying to increase the lipophilicity, but it's for another reason. It's not to get absorbed. It's to make it have a longer duration of action. You see the idea? All right. This is another thing. I want to enhance patient acceptability. So I want to create a pro-drug uh, that would be more acceptable by patients. And what's the problem with patient acceptability? Sometimes it's the bitter taste. The drug tastes very bad. Before, before you, you cannot use the flavor and at the same time have a bitter taste. You have to mask the bitter taste first and then use a flavor. So how do we mask the bitter taste? Same thing, we will add an ester. Okay? And why do we add the ester? Because we want to decrease solubility. If the drug is insoluble, then uh, the, the, the taste receptors in your tongue will not recognize the drug. Okay? The, the taste receptors, they feel the drug only because it's soluble. Okay? So if it is not soluble, then the, uh, the receptors in your tongue will not feel the drug. Okay? And this is what we want. So we, something like chloramphenicol, we mask it with a very long chain as well, ester. The palmitate ester. And actually, palmitate esters are, used, are always used for this reason, to mask the bitter taste. Okay? And then you can put the flavors or whatever you want. Okay. So in, to, to enhance patient acceptability, we decreased the drug solubility, right? But sometimes we need to increase the drug solubility, not decrease it. Okay? You're good? So why do we want to do this? Sometimes we want to increase instead of decrease because we want to have, for example, the drug in, a, in an injection. And of course, in an injection IV, you, you cannot have it insoluble, right? So if you take something like the same chloramphenicol, you can add an ester, but this ester needs to be hydrophilic, not hydrophobic. So a drug like chloramphenicol, you can, you can tailor it according to your use. If you want to take it oral and it's very bitter, you, inc you decrease its solubility. If you want to take it IV, have to increase, the increase the solubility. Okay. Um, so there's two ways to increase the solubility actually. Let's see. Or maybe more. Let's see. So here we, just to uh, get back to this, to increase the duration of action, we increased lipophilicity, right? But actually we can also retard metabolism, decrease the metabolism of the drug. But this is, th this is dealt with separately here as one of the uh, targets. Okay, where is it? Increase drug stability. So to increase the drug solubility, we can attach ionizable groups. So groups that get ionized, okay? Like the phosphate or the succinate. So you make an ester, but it's an ionizable ester. So it gets a charge in the end. So now it's very soluble in water, okay? And you have to know these esters because you can use phosphate or succinate. There is a problem if you attach those esters. Uh, of course, they are not permeable uh, they, are, they, they do not pass membranes very easily because they are ionizable, right? So what if you want to have something that is hydrophilic and at the same time passes the membranes? What do you do? Something hydrophilic and same time passes the membrane. Mm -hmm. Of course, you cannot increase the lipophilicity because if you increase the lipophilicity, it's, hydro, it's hydrophobic. It's not hydrophilic anymore. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You attach to it an amino acid. 
because the amino acid uh, is is ionized is ionizable it has for example a coh or an nh2 that can be ionized into nh3 plus or coo minus okay and at the same time the amino acid can be absorbed because of the transporter system remember this part yeah okay right. so there these are the ways of increasing drug solubility you attach ionizable groups or you attach an amino acid or actually you can attach a sugar moiety it's not ionizable but of course sugar dissolves in water right <laughs> okay um so those you have the examples for this i see you are getting tired so i'll just go over this quickly and then okay so no no i'm i, I can tell so so what what did we do till now we're trying to increase permeability we increase lipophilicity or attach an amino acid okay and to increase the duration of action we can increase lipophilicity or retard metabolism and this will deal with later to increase patient acceptability we decrease the solubility right remember chloramphenicol and palmitate ester yes. to increase solubility you attach ionizable groups or you attach an amino acid or you attach a sugar moiety okay and then to increase drug stability to retard the metabolism you can mask the group that is labai remember the shielding or you can change it into an obstructive group right for example we had here uh, the examples in the lecture are are nice i want you to look at the, lecture, the, the question of this lecture will come that you give us a question and you tell us comment what's happening here hmm? the, the the question is the lecture like that that you give us an equation and tell us what's happening here and to comment and yes it's something like this i'll tell you what is what are we trying to do what is the strategy we adopted Ah, yes. So, for example, we're trying, uh, the objective is we're trying to increase the permeability. The strategy is that we increase the lipophilicity through attaching a lipophilic ester, yes, something like yes. this. All right. So, here we're in try trying to increase drug solubility. I want you to go through those, those um, uh, examples. examples, yes. Increasing drug solubility. Here, for example, we're trying to increase the drug stability. We know that this morphine-like structure would be metabolized here. So what do we do? We just block this axis. Okay, we add something. So we add a, a big oh. ester to block its axis. And why this ester specifically? Because this ester is actually, it, it makes a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory effect. So of course, people who are taking morphine and they're trying to stop, then they, they have pain. So you give them something that when it breaks, it's a painkiller. So it's good. Okay. Here, for example, we have, um, we want to increase the drug stability and we have those labile groups. So we add, we add some amides because the amides are metabolized, but they are not metabolized that fast. Okay. So these are all the tricks. So to increase, to decrease the incidence of side effects, to decrease the incidence of side effects, some, some drugs like the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they have carboxylic group and you know, the, these, they cause gastric st gastric problems right yeah the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs so they have gastric problems and then they have cooh so they increase the acidity this is even more problematic so how do we stop this we can mask this cooh okay so if we mask it here we are masking it with uh, a glycerol because this soothes the lining of the stomach okay but in the end you're just trying to mask we're just trying to mask the um the, the 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 group that causes the side effect okay or i can target my drug to a certain uh, um, to a certain organ inside the body for example or to a certain location inside the body like, can i take this pause okay so up till now uh, we talked about uh, increasing permeability duration of action patient acceptability solubility or stability or decreasing size effect, this is what we stopped at, that we have, uh, for example, COOH causes side effects, and to mask this side effect, you can introduce uh, a glyceride ester, okay? Or we can target... Do you have to memorize the group? Uh, it's better to do so, but in the exam, if you're lost, and you, you can do it, so just, just add a good ester, like a big hydrophobic ester. Sorry? Just add a, a hydrophobic ester. If you're lost in the exam, and, and you don't remember... No, not a benzene ring, uh, like, like, like any of these esters here. We can add something, we can write them. Yes, for example, I get you those, this naproxen, and it has COOH, and you know that this is acidic, so it affects the stomach. So you, you tell me that you will uh, convert this into CO and you put any lipophilic ester here. 
anyone of your choice. The best thing to get the best grades is to put the, ex the exact test. You have to remember some like flick esters, please. It's in the lecture. Yes, in the lecture. And it's in this summary. Should be, hopefully. No, no, I told you we can do this or this. We can have this or this in the exam. Okay. Okay. So the last point is targeting. So how do I target my drug to a certain place? I want to make a pro drug so that it goes to a certain location. It doesn't go into the other location. So uh, there is two ways uh, to 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 administer the drug in a certain location and prevent it from going other ways. For example, I take it orally and I do some changes in the drug so it doesn't get absorbed. Okay, this is very easy. And and the, the example for this is a certain antibiotic. An antibiotic I want to take orally and I want to attach something to it so it doesn't get absorbed. So I, I attach something very hydrophilic to it so it doesn't get absorbed. And, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. No, of course you know. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> No, no, this one it's included heavily. 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 It's, it's, it's a lot of marks in this one. But the other part of it is not included that much. The bioprecursor. So, so here we're talking about the carrier linked pro drugs. This is included in the. It's, 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 it's a huge part of the exam. Which is not important. Uh, the bioprecursor. What is going to come out? Uh, I don't really remember if I, if I included something of it in the exam, but it will not be much, if, even if I include it. <laughs> uh, the metabolic, in, uh, so, so either I prevent it from going, uh, I, I inject it or I put it in a certain location, I prevent it from going it elsewhere. Or I, I use metabolic enzymes that are present in a certain location. So I attach something to the drug, so I have a certain drug, I attach to it a certain group, and this bond is not broken except by a certain types of enzymes. And I know that these types of enzymes are present in this certain organ. Okay? So uh, we use this by, by making phosphate uh, and cyclic phosphate esters. And we know that phosphatases, the ones that break these, are present more in cancer cells, for example, or in, in certain uh, liver cells. So now I can target cancer cells or liver cells. Okay? So I, uh, this summarizes the lecture. So. Uh, there, there are examples in the lecture. So you, if, you, if you go through the lecture, uh, just a sec. Uh, so here, for example, um, uh, so here we have this, we have this drug. We make this ester, and we know that it is catalyzed by the cytochrome p450 that are present in the liver. Okay, so it will break and it will release this drug. Okay? And here we have. Um, here we have phosphosterol and we know that this type of ester will be broken in the cancer cells. They have lots of phosphatase enzymes. Okay? And then afterwards we have the bioprecursor prodrugs and I didn't include that much. This is not that much of important, but I'll include this in the order. Okay? Alright, let's stop here.